Okay, so that shows that God is real. And one day we'll die and our soul will live forever, either in heaven or hell. Do you care about your, your eternal home? So we can talk to these people. Do you care about your eternal home? If you care about your eternal home, then you should uh, trust in Jesus as your Savior and follow Him, and He'll bless your whole life. So here we talk about God's love and salvation. God has two main natures. He's full of love and he, and he accepts us and He doesn't want us to perish. At the same time, He's very holy and righteous and He will judge all people and punish sinners. And the only ways He can give us eternal life is to send His Son Jesus Christ to die for us. And then when we trust in Jesus and follow Jesus, then uh, when we trust in Jesus, then we are forgiven and have eternal life. And then when we trust in Jesus, when we have the real faith, then uh, the Holy Spirit will live in us and then we'll transform our life and then we'll obey Him. So who will be saved? People who trust in Jesus. But people who trust in Jesus will also be changed. Their life will be changed and they will bear fruit to, to show that they are really born again. So that shows that God is real. God will... Uh, that uh, when we trust in Jesus as our Savior, then we'll have et eternal life. He has two main natures. And He loves us very much, no matter how sinful or how weak we are. When we trust in Jesus and say, Lord, I need you, please forgive me, and then God will for sure forgive us. And we have all kinds of sins. Depression is sin, because depression is, you know, having no faith, you know, whatever is not our faith is sin and anger and a divorce, adultery, marriage problem, or despise of people, or love of money, and or a bad word, bad language, and also a pride and gossip and laziness and lust. All these are sins, uh, whether in our thought or in our words or in our action. And the wages of sin is death. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 And then Jeremiah 17.9 17, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So everyone is wicked and deceitful. And Romans 6.23 And the wages of sin is death. So if we don't have forgiveness, then we'll have eternal death. And then, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So if we trust in Jesus, we will have eternal life. And 2 Corinthians 5.21, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. So there is an exchange. Our sin will go to Jesus. So Him who knew no sin is Jesus. To be sin for us, He will become sin for us. And then we might become the righteousness of God. The righteousness of Christ will be transferred to us and our sin will be transferred to Him. So that's a great gift. And also Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. So Jesus became a curse. That is really a great, great thing He has done for us. So He took all curse. So we don't have to worry about curses. So He has redeemed us from curses. If we trust in Jesus as our Savior and forsake our sins, then there is no more curse. But if a person believes in Jesus but he continues sin, then sin gives the devil a foothold and the devil can attack him. So uh, uh, there, there are consequences of sin. When we are forgiven, it doesn't mean we can continue to sin. And then if a person continues sin, Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy his life. And then he can, you know, uh, be far more, farther and farther away from God. And one day he can lose salvation if he doesn't repent. And then, but when we confess our sins, so we can tell these people, when we confess our sins, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we confess our sin and and with what attitude? In Psalm 51, 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. This, O God, you will not despise. So if a person is truly sorry for his sins, a contrite heart is a heart that is sorry for his sin, that God will not despise. And then believing in Jesus is not just believing in the head, it's receiving Him. 
in John 1 12 but as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name so when we receive Jesus as our Savior and as our Lord the Lord of our life then we'll become children of God and then there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents so if if we repent of our sin there's joy in heaven so uh, come to the Lord and ask God to forgive you and he is very very happy to forgive you and this is a short sinner's prayer that we pray with the person to lead the person to repentance and trust in Jesus as his Savior thank you Jesus for dying for our sins dear Heavenly Father thank you Jesus for dying for our sins please forgive my sins I have not sincerely worshiped you and obey you please give me eternal life and I'm willing to love you obey you and serve you I praise you and love you Heavenly Father I love you and thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen so here we have four things to thank Jesus for dying for our sins and the second is to please ask God to forgive us and to uh, give us eternal life because we have sinned and then three uh, we are willing to love God and obey God and serve you and I and then four I praise you and thank you Lord so if it's very simple prayer we can just tell people say thank you Jesus for dying on the cross for me and please forgive my sins and then we name our sins and then please give me eternal life and then three I'm willing to love you to obey you to serve you and then four I praise you father I thank you father so we teach people to praise God more and this is a longer sinner's prayer that listed some of the sins Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I'm sorry that I have disobeyed you. I have told lies. I have hurt people's feelings. I have gossiped. I have greed and lust. Please forgive my sins and give me eternal life. I accept you as my God and my Savior. I love you. I adore you and worship you. I want to obey and follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this prayer is... Uh, in a prayer we list out some of the sins and then we can say to people would you like me to lay my hands on you and pray for you the Bible says that you can experience God's work when we lay hand on you that in Mark 16 verse 18 that they will lay hand on the sick and they will recover and also Paul went and lay hand on, on people and they were healed and Acts 8 17 they lay hand on the people and they received the Holy Spirit so this is one way we can experience the Holy Spirit so uh, laying on hands laying hands on people will help first will help people to experience God and his nature experience his peace no burdens love joy power so that happens to a lot of people when they when they come to God for um, for uh, when they you know when we lay hand on them and second bring inner healing and and better sleep that the person will have in the inner healing and uh, uh, that the whole person will be more peaceful and they will sleep better and three can bring health or healing that they will physical health and four let people experience how real God is and help people to build up relationship with God and revive their spiritual life so when we lay hand on them and they experience God that shows them that God is very real and this will help them to believe in Jesus and also uh, for Christians it will revive their spiritual life they will say wow God is very real now we should also tell people after we believe in Jesus what we should do to follow God and be blessed so this is something we should uh, tell people after you believe in Jesus what you should do to have a good relationship with God first pray many times a day not just pray before meal and before sleep but all the all the day we can praise God thank God and trust in Jesus salvation and forgiveness and then two, read and meditate on and apply the Bible so the Bible three go to church and know and worship God four obey God and tell people about Jesus salvation so this four points Christians should do are to pray for forgiveness and salvation uh, and for strength and then to read and the Bible and 
follow and obey the Bible. Three, go to church and worship God and know about God. And four, uh, obey God and tell people about Jesus. And then we should also tell people how to be blessed by God. That in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So when we love Him, then God will bless our whole life uh, with things we never imagined. And then Matthew 6, 33, we seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So when people seek God's kingdom, that means they want more people to enter the kingdom of grace, to be saved. And also they let God be the king in their hearts, in their life. Then, then they're seeking God's kingdom to enter their life. Then when God is king there, then God will bless and, and, his, uh, and also seek His righteousness. That means obeying Him and all these things shall be added to us. And continue to say how to be blessed by God. Three would be uh, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So when we obey God's word, the Bible says that, that uh, we'll uh, be blessed. And then Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. So, we can be blessed by God when we delight in God and count all the blessings. God created heaven and the earth and uh, different kind of food and, and the sun and the rain and our body, our, our life and eternal life and and all this. So God is so good. So we delight in God. You know, I delight in God all the time. I enjoy God all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. I enjoy God all the time. And Isaiah 58, 14, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, then God will cause us to ride on the high hills of the earth. Then God will cause us to go to a high place that will become honorable people. So when we delight in God, then we'll be blessed. And then the motivation to love God, to obey Him and serve Him. First, God loves us very much and also He's almighty. Second, we are very precious. God loves us very much. Three, when we love God, obey God and serve God, uh, God is very happy and He'll bless us. And our life will go to a high level. And four, if we don't love God and obey God and sin, there will be destruction. And the worst scenario is that someone can lose salvation. So if God is full of love and He is full of power, He's almighty, and we are precious in His sight, He loves us, and when we obey Him and love Him and serve Him, He's very happy and bless us. But if we don't follow Him and don't love Him, then, uh, then there will be destruction. So what way do you, which way do you want to go? So hopefully that will encourage people to say, well, God is so good and so real. So there are proofs about God. So we want to follow God. And also God can give us healing. You know, that come to you all, come to me, Jesus said. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. And then He can heal the broken hearted. So we can be healed by... Uh, by coming to Jesus and have a close relationship with Jesus. And then the Bible also talks about the necessary fruit of salvation, that when we are saved, we don't just sit there and do nothing. Because when the Holy Spirit comes in our heart, the Holy Spirit will prompt us to follow God. So these are the six fruits. The first two are related to salvation. You can see that. A, related to salvation. And then uh, that because in, when we are saved, we repent and trust in Jesus as our Savior and Master. So, uh, in our daily life, we continue to repent of our sins and turn away from sins. And then secondly, we continue to trust in Jesus as my Savior and also as my Master, my Lord. And then B will be related to relationship. So, we'll have a, we'll, uh, God wants us to have a close relationship with Him then He will bear much fruit and He will also stay in us. But if we don't stay in us, then we will be like a branch ca cast to the, uh, thrown to the outside and cast to the fire. So if a person doesn't have a living, living relationship with God, then he can lose salvation. And fourth, 
to love God with all our heart. That is the greatest commandment. And also in uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 22, it says that cursed is everyone who doesn't love the Lord. And then C will be related to good works, to obey God, especially the great commission and the great commandment to love God and love people and to preach the gospel and uh, tell, tell people to obey everything Jesus has taught us. And then serve God. Serve God doesn't necessarily mean serving God in the church. It could mean anything we do to glorify God, uh, to bless people in Jesus' name, in the daily life, and also in the ministry. Now, some people say, does the Bible really tell us that we have to serve God? In Matthew 25, the second and third parable is very clear. The sec second parable is about using the spiritual gift for God. So if we don't use the spiritual gift, then uh, the person is thrown into the outer darkness that he just buried the spiritual gift and, and uh, all the resource we have, they don't use for God. And the third parable is about the sheep and the goats. And then those who don't do good to the brothers, then they'll be thrown into the fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So that means we need to do good to people. And actually it's a good thing because it will make people happy and make us happy and God will remember and bless us. But for people who don't serve God, who don't do good to the brothers, then they will be cast into the fire, prepared for the devil and, and his angels. So these six fruits are necessary according to the Bible to continue to repent of our sins, to trust in Jesus as Savior and our Lord, and then have a close relationship with God, and then to love God and obey God and serve God. But people say, well, this is too hard. But actually, when we come to God and love God, we'll, be, we'll have much strength. And actually, we can enjoy it. We can enjoy serving God. When we serve God, we have joy, we have strength, and God will bless us. And God has a wonderful plan in your life, and He can lead you to a high level. He can bless your whole life. Do you want God to bless you? So this is an evangelism method. And you can see the QR code here. If you scan it with your cell phone, you can download the, uh, the PDF and then use it for evangelism. Or you can just use part of it. So may God help you that you have the motivation to be used by God. Lord, we'll have a short prayer now. Lord Jesus, come and bless us. Give us the motivation to do evangelism. Give us wisdom how to talk to people that we let them know God is real and God wants to bless us and we can experience His love so our whole life will be blessed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Mm -hmm.